If you are going to get a PRP injection for an orthopedic concern, you've got a rotator cuff tear, some Achilles tendinosis, knee osteoarthritis, whatever the issue may be, there are three crucial things that are going to separate whether you have a high chance of having a good response or a low chance of having a good response. The first one is going to be the diagnosis. Now this is arguably the most crucial now this is not the diagnosis based on imaging because we can take an MRI, we can see structural changes, but what we don't know is are those structural changes actually causing your pain. So for example, you might have a rotator cuff tear on your shoulder MRI, but your pain could actually be referred from a facet joint in the neck or a nerve root in the neck, and we actually had a case on this recently. And so if, the doctor just gets an MRI of the shoulder because you have pain in your shoulder region and you've got a small supraspinatus tear and you get PRP into it, it's not going to work because it is not the cause of your pain. And so in order to make sure that you are kind of gonna have a good response from this standpoint, you wanna make sure that you are vetting the clinic to find out what their diagnostic workup process looks like. How much time are they spending with you? Are they placing a focus on this physical exam or are they just gonna tell you what you need based on the MRI findings? Now the second one is going to be the platelet dose. There are now ample studies out there showing that the higher the platelet dose in general, the better response you are going to see from that injection. Now we have most of this research in knee osteoarthritis, but it is super clear that if you are getting an underdosed PRP injection, you are less likely to have a positive response. And if you have a positive response, that is likely not going to last a very long period of time. Whereas if you go to higher doses, so for knee osteoarthritis, we're looking at minimum 5 billion platelets delivered into the knee, ideally 10 billion, and it may be even higher than that. But if you are not getting that dose, then the chances of you having a positive long-term response are going to go way down. So when you're vetting clinics, you wanna find out how are they measuring the platelet dose? Because if they're not measuring platelet dose, then there's a chance that you're not gonna get sufficient amounts. Because if you don't measure it, how do you know how much is actually going inside the joint, the tendon, the ligament, things like that. The third is going to be image guidance. If, for example, we want to inject inside of a supraspinatus tear or inside the tendinosis in an Achilles tendon, sure, you can kind of get in the area and you can get in the generalized area when you do a palpation guided procedure, but that is nowhere near accurate as actually using ultrasound to visualize that tear or visualize that tendinosis, put the needle directly inside that area and then inject the PRP. And so when you are vetting clinics, you're going to want to find out what type of imaging are they going to use for the delivery of that PRP. Now, in our experience and in our opinion, if there's only gonna be one type of imaging, ultrasound is going to be the best here. Now, this doesn't apply when we're looking at more advanced procedures such as intraosseous injections or intradiscal injections. That's where the x-ray is gonna be absolutely crucial. However, when we're dealing with soft tissue injuries, tendons, ligaments, even when we're dealing with osteoarthritis where you know uh, we have knee or shoulder, we can get into those areas very well with ultrasound. And so as long as there's ultrasound in the mix for these injections, that is gonna increase the odds that you are going to see a positive response. Remember these three things when you are going to research clinics to do your next PRP injection.